what's going on everybody welcome back and it seems like just yesterday we were unboxing the Mac Pro and I was doing that fun exciting video uh, all about you know the performance that you can get out of the base Mac Pro and I appreciate all the love and support on that video and it's great to hear from other people in the same position wanting to uh, see what kind of the base model had to offer and a lot of the comments talked about how they went with the base model and had a few upgrades planned. And what was funny is we pretty much all seem to have very similar upgrade models. And that's what today's video is all about, as you can probably tell from the title. Now, the two upgrades that I'm focusing on here is RAM and the graphics, since those were my two big bottlenecks, both on my previous computer, as well as the past couple of weeks that I've been using the base Mac Pro. Again, it came with eight gigs on the single GPU, and then it had uh, 32 gigs of RAM. The RAM, uh, for the most part, was okay, but DaVinci, especially once I got into bigger projects and had multiple things open, I got up to where it was, DaVinci itself was using like 22 gigs, and then obviously you have the system, and so running a couple different programs, leaving them open for a little bit, uh, I actually did end up not crashing the computer, but causing it to essentially fill up and then you know everything kind of freezes. So that was a fun little test. So I knew I needed to upgrade RAM. I had 64, I knew that was probably fine, but I really just wanted to future-proof myself so I didn't have to worry about upgrading for the next couple of years. So I picked up 128 gigs. Unlike going from Apple, which that would cost me $2,800 for freaking RAM. Of course, I got it from OWC, Otherworld Computing, and this RAM only costs about $650-ish. So the RAM actually came in first last week. It's already currently in there and I've been using it for the past week, but Let's see how the installation went, and then we'll get on to the fun GPU. Boom. We can see on the inside here uh, that there's a bunch of, I mean, to you, they probably just look like lines, but they're essentially different configurations. So based on how many memory sticks you have, uh, these are the different configurations that you should input, obviously from the base stock where there's just four, um, adding, I believe what we're going to, because we're adding four, so we're gonna have eight total. Uh, so let's see, that's six, and this is eight. So we're gonna be doing this middle configuration where I basically just have to have everything but the top two slots open. RAM always makes me pretty nervous anyway, but I've never spent $700 on RAM, and so that makes me even more nervous. Uh, I'm like totally gonna block you guys, I don't care. Ah, hate doing that. You have to push until you hear the thing click halfway down. Hurts your thumbs. I don't know how people build computers all day. Uno mas. If all goes well, we should have 160 gigs of RAM. Alrighty, here we go. So not off to a wonderful start. So on top, the light is flashing red. Generally doesn't mean a good thing. Let's see. It says, if there's a memory detection error or data error, the status indicator will be a solid for 0.2 seconds and repeat every second. Uh, yeah, I would say that's doing that. A little longer than a few minutes later. All right, so apparently when you're using mixed capacities, so for example, the baseline comes with four eight gigs to give you 32. I bought 128 gigs, but using 32 gig dims. And when you use that, you have to put the 32 gigs in a certain channel. But as I mentioned a couple minutes ago, how nervous I was putting them in and I hope that I would never have to take them out. Now I have to take all eight out. Hmm. We have all the dims out now to put them in the proper configuration, I guess. Six channels in the 12 dim slots, and then each channel has a one and a two slot. So I need to put it in channel three, five, eight, and 10. Let's see if this works. I hope this helps someone else out there. All right, we got 32 gigs in three, five, eight, and 10, the Apple ones in between. So one and two and 11 and 12 are completely open. That is the configuration we should do when we have eight dims. 
Everything is, oh, that one's not fully seated. Ha ha, install these guys back. Here's to hoping for a green light. We got startup chime. We got Apple logo. Yes. Do we have 160 gigs of RAM? Just in public. Now, performance-wise, since using just that, uh, man, what can I say? I literally can have all the programs that I'm using open, those same DaVinci Resolve files, uh, Photoshop, basically as many programs as I want open, and I was using anywhere between like 3% and like 15%, and so I know for at least the good next couple of years that there is no way I'm going to fill up 160 gigs now moving on to the exciting piece here. So this came in today. So this is the W5700X uh, MPX module from Apple. I'm perfectly fine going third party for some things, but uh, when it comes to the graphics, installation, setup, drivers, that sort of thing, I didn't want to have to deal with any sort of fuss. And I personally don't think this is that uh, overpriced for the convenience the value, um, and what you're getting. First, we're going to open up this guy. The other exciting thing is, again, uh, there's not many Mac Pro videos out there, and most of the time people ordered theirs with a much higher end configuration. And so I haven't actually seen any unboxings of just the individual components. And they have the beautiful, nice strong tab. This table's not very strong. So that went all the way across. Shipping container off. Oh. oh, wow. I mean, I guess I shouldn't be fully surprised, but again, like for those of you who care about Apple's amazing unboxing experience, I mean, this is, can you hear that? Really cool textured, nice Apple logo on the top. And then we can see Mac Pro MPX module, and it's got a little graphic design of this specific option. And just like everything else, we have a very nice white seal on the side here. And pull that. Once we got the tab pulled. Wow. This is, again, significant packaging, but I guess it's all in order to keep things safe. Top here we have, oh my gosh, are we gonna get like Apple stickers with this? So no Apple stickers in there, that's okay. Slide that back to that little slot. So when I pull the sides, and this is just chilling right there. Little desk. So I believe I can just thumb screw off these. Thumb screws tied by a robot. I guarantee you for anyone who's watching this, who's already done this, you are yelling at your computer right now. All right, so took that little plate off. And then essentially right here, there's a little switch and that uh, is very satisfying and it unlocks all the PCI slots so that you can slot in something new. So currently it's locked. So here you have it. And what is nice is in addition to obviously just graphics performance, uh, we're also gaining a good amount of IO on the back um, essentially four Thunderbolt 3 ports and an extra HDMI 2.0 ports. I am gonna have to take this off, aren't I? Again, people who have done this, I am sorry. There we go, okay, yep, took that plate off. All right, and here we go. And in the true Apple fashion, this should be relatively easy and just slide in. And I do want you guys to see, but I also want to do it right. Alrighty, so I believe that's it. And now this is looking a little bit more full. Got 160 gigs of RAM in the back, and now we have 24 gigs of total graphics power. Uh, I know that's not like cumulative in every program or anything. Again, this is the stuff that I like about Apple. There's no drivers or anything you have to mess with. As soon as I boot it up and go to about this Mac, I can go under PCIe slots and instantly I see the existing one built in there 
as well if I go over to the whatever it's called iStats uh, application here to the graphics I can see the 580x uh, handling pretty much the monitors because I have the HDMI ports plugged directly into there and we got the 5700x just kind of chilling here and so now I'm going to spend the next couple days doing a bunch of tests and then I'll get back to you but obviously you'll see that in a couple seconds so here you go. Alrighty, so I just want to give you guys a quick taste on with the RAM and GPU upgraded, what sort of basic performance uh, I'm getting with all the usual tasks that I do. Now, I have everything closed here currently, and you can see uh, CPU hovering around 10%, um, and then we have our stock graphics card. This is the one that's handling everything uh, primarily. So you can see that with my three monitors, I have a 4K, a UHD, and a 1080p screen. Um, and you can see with nothing open, it's already almost half, maybe two third or a third of the way already used up of that eight gigs memory. So you can see why I needed to add in that secondary card because this one's pretty much just chilling down here, um, ready to go. Now you can also see for RAM, uh, don't really have much of anything open, so we're barely using any of it, which makes sense. So now let's get some stuff open. First up, let's open Resolve. We're going to open the first Mac Pro project that I did. That is a full 6K timeline, tons of B-roll, heavy color grades, uh, and a good project to test out the strength of everything. All right, so we got this project loaded up. And by the way, this also will be a good test because I was never able to do... A lot of screen capture stuff while editing because it was always super laggy so hopefully this is all nice and smooth for you guys because I got a uh, quick time just the built-in screen recording going opening up the project checking on everything we still see we're doing plenty fine um, in my resolve preferences I do have it set up under memory and GPU to only be utilizing the W5700X uh, so again, it's not trying to tap into the stock one. Now currently I have this project set up to again, be a full 6K timeline. I uh, do have ProRes 422 proxies uh, turned on uh, or set up. Currently it's turned off. Um, and this is where I actually noticed one small bottleneck, uh, which I just had to make a change in my workflow a little bit. All right, and you can see that during the playback here, um, again, I don't have any proxies turned on right now. And if I go under playback, I'm at full resolution, you can see here. And this is handling extremely well. Now, the one bottleneck I was talking about a second ago is everything, all the footage is currently stored on my Drobo 8D, which is filled with a bunch of mechanical hard drives. So while they are high performance and uh, NAS type storage drives, they still are nowhere close to SSDs and especially the SSDs built inside the Mac Pro. But this being a 256 gig internal drive, uh, just won't cut it here. So again, it is nearly smooth. You can see it's hovering at that 24, um, but then sometimes will drop and stutter a little bit. So the workaround for that is I had another um, Samsung T5 drive and what I did is if I open up my finder I'm basically using this one terabyte drive as a kind of cache uh, and proxy setup so in here is where I save all the proxies and everything too so if I simply go under here and turn on uh, my proxies you'll see this blue bar show up so now uh, I have solid playback absolutely no problems as probably a lot of people would once you set up proxies uh, but it definitely with everything still showed me the importance that you can have the best graphics the best ram but you still want to use a solid state drive or as good of a hard drive as you possibly can now with this playing in the background we can see that we've really started to tap into that w5700x hovering right about half um uh, 50% or so of usage for the memory and processor on that GPU. And to me, this is great because, um, again, this project is as advanced as I currently get uh, with graphics, heavy color grades and everything. So I'm very happy with that. But let's try to kick it up a notch. And we're going to be working on the, let's say, uh, in Photoshop, we're going to open up just kind of a generic thumbnail 
you can see how fast that still opened up. Let's open up uh, this thumbnail here. Uh, let's do see some content aware. And again, these aren't the most process intensive things, but these are real world applications. How much can you actually be doing productive tasks? I much prefer to see this stuff over uh, like Geekbench things that don't really translate into real world. So obviously this is all terrible, but you can see that there's essentially no lag whatsoever in this content aware. I mean, even if I do a big one there, it's not going to turn out well at all. Uh, but if I try to content aware this whole uh, 2013, ah, there it goes. Still no issues. By the way, I didn't ever stop to play back, so this is still going in the background, playing perfectly smoothly. Um, again, haven't changed too much. How are we on RAM? Uh, we can see Resolve's tapping into 13 gigs, and Photoshop is under two. Uh, let's see, what about After Effects? Let's see what that will do to it. And would you look at that? After Effects, uh, non-responsive applications. I was just trying to load in a basic template, and you can see that um, well, you can kind of see behind it, nothing's being tapped out remotely. Uh, just, I really hate Adobe products sometimes. Gets uh, back here. Oh, yay. Uh, so here is a sneak preview of a new um, intro that I'm working on. A uh, 6K timeline I have it set up to be. And so you can see it's going at half speed. We still got the... Uh, resolve 6k timeline going on in the back still Photoshop open and let's get Another kicker out here. Let's get chrome up. Uh, we can see after effects has jumped into taking up uh, Eight and a half gigs, but still you can see we're not getting anywhere close to maxing out the RAM um, The GPU is definitely starting to get up there a little bit. All right, and we're gonna watch one of Armando's latest best uh Cinematic uh, masterpieces here loading in full 8k you can see no bandwidth or playback issues whatsoever So we got this going We got oh this paused So we still got that going that video is still playing in the background a little jitters here and there But this is just crazy to me uh, jumping back in We can see that nothing is fully maxed out. We can definitely see our first graphics card Getting a little uh, hot and heavy right here. This is still about halfway to two thirds maxing out. And RAM uh, Resolve actually went down in usage. And Chrome surprisingly is only taking up uh, about two gigs. But again, we're at around 10% pressure. So definitely nowhere near the max. So hopefully this was a good real world test for you guys to show that um, you know, you don't need the Duo Vega whatever $7,000 GPUs. These aren't 1080p timelines. I mean, again, this is a 6K setup. I know this isn't the most complex thing. You got this huge resolve. And so I think a lot of creators are not doing too much more than uh, what I'm showing off here, especially like, I mean, I may be doing two of these things at the same time, but definitely not all of this at the same time. But knowing that I can, just really really impressive so there you guys have it if you have any questions let me know down in the comments below thanks so much for watching